Hi, thanks for joining us. My name is David Champitra. I work with the Siemens Company Tech Services, and today I'll be demonstrating the field Terminated Z-Plug. Let's get started. Okay, so here we go and with the termination. This is our Z-Plug, as mentioned. This is the terminated version here with the optional boot and latch protector. As far as parts, you get uh, a nice perforated bag here. You get the Z-plug body, you get the termination lacing module, color-coded T568 A and B. Also you get an optional boot and an optional color-coded latch protector. As far as tools, you'll need some type of a flush cutter, diagonal cutter such as these, any type of cable jacket strip tool. Uh, the Small flat screwdriver is, might be helpful for a retermination, so I'd recommend something like this. And then, uh, of course, you'll need the compression tool. This is our Z-Tool, and this comes in every standard pack or bulk pack. Uh, and this tool has several functions. Uh, it does your compression primarily uh, with the tool handle here, but this feature here on the inside uh, is designed to accept the lacing module and it gives you some leverage to snap this door shut because it's important to have a nice tight fit there for your transfer impedance. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice on the bottom of the tool handle, there's a couple knobs here, uh, and that helps for the re-terminations, and I'll show you how that works. And then of course, your land rate attachment. As far as cable types, this plug works with uh, quite a wide range of cable types, 22 to 26 gauge, as you can see here, even this bigger outside plant cable. Today we'll be featuring uh, the, the most typical construction, uh, which is a Category 6A FUTP construction. Uh, the other fairly common one is an unshielded, but this works with both shielded and unshielded cable types. So I'll sh uh, show you a demonstration uh, with this FUTP construction here. So if you, if you nick your jacket or your foil at all, it's, uh, you need to restart that because uh, when you do your foil prep, it can break off on you, so make sure you haven't nicked that foil. And you can be pretty aggressive when you pull this back. So you see how I inverted it back on top of itself, on top of the jacket. And you also want to unfold that so the conductive side is facing out. Uh, this construction also has a drain wire. So take the drain wire, and it helps for, for a transfer impedance for a better ground path if you wrap that drain wire around on top of the foil, right near the edge of the jacket, as you can see here. This mylar protective layer can be removed. So trim that off, and also trim off the center isolator, but be careful not to nick your conductors. So flex your conductors out of the way. Get as close as you can without nicking them. Uh, that'll make termination a little easier. So once you're at this point, the termination is actually identical to uh, an unshielded termination. Uh, so the foil prep is the only difference. It's important to prep that foil properly. So now you're ready to arrange your conductors and insert them into the lacing module. So this lacing module has a little door feature. Uh, if you look closely, you can see the black arrow. Uh, that points to where the door opens. And you can take a small flat screwdriver and pry that open, or you can just take your your thumb and push in and pry it open. Either way should work well. Uh, it's important to arrange your conductors first before you put them in. That'll make lacing a little easier. So if you choose, you know, choose which wire scheme you want, uh, there's the T568 A and B schemes, uh, you know, designated with a little A and B. So today I'll do the B scheme for you, which means uh, the, the brown, uh, the green conductor, or the green pair. Uh, will go in first as well as the brown pair. So that does help to put those in first. So if I arrange it accordingly with uh, brown and green first and then the orange and blue, and it helps to arrange it kind of in a flat pattern like this uh, so it fits into that doorway easier like this. So get those started and then push this up as far as it will go because it's important to have that drain wire and the foil making contact to the, the ground clips on either side of this. So in other words, don't leave it sticking out here. Press that all the way up and then get this door started. 
Now, uh, you probably will not be able to use your fingers to close this. Uh, it's, an, it's designed to be a tight fit for your ground path. So get it started as far as you can. And that's where this feature of the tool comes in handy. So if you look at the bottom of the lacing module, you know, opposite the door side, it's the same shape as this feature inside the tool. So you want to place that in, it's kind of like a puzzle piece. Uh, just make sure it's inserted all the way up, seated nicely, and then you can start this door handle closure. So once you have that set in there like this, hopefully you can see that, uh, you can use this tool handle for leverage to snap that door shut. So you can see that the door is closed now, and now you're free to lace this into place. Uh, and you just, again, following the color code, so blue and brown on this side. And then for the B scheme, uh, the green is on the far side, orange is on the near side. So if you're right-handed like me, um, notice the, the tip and ring designation. So the, the solid colors, if you're right-handed like me, the solid colors would be toward me. And then the white conductors, or the mostly white with the tracer, will be away from you. So it's just a matter of arranging this accordingly. So just spin these conductors open uh, so they pop into place. So it helps to have a little bit of a fingernail you know, to dig into the, ID, the insulation so it doesn't slip on you. So pop that in. If you don't have any fingernails, you can use some you know, pliers to pull these in. But it's really not too hard. Uh, if you have a long enough section here, you have more to hold on to. On the other side, most people turn this around. Again, the whites will be away from you. Spin this open a couple times to get that, the pairs to open up. And then you're ready to trim this. So once you get these in, make sure the conductors are not, you know, are, are below flush. Take your diagonal cutters, trim these flush. And at this point, you can cut off your excess foil as well. Just nip the edge of that and peel it off. And now you're ready to insert this into the, the plug body. So notice uh, this is keyed, so it only goes in smoothly in one direction. But uh, it's, it's best to remember the side of the plug body with the two cutouts, as you can see here. Um, that's the only side with two cutouts. There's one cutout on the back. Uh, those larger cutouts are to capture the boot. Uh, the smaller cutout uh, captures the latch on the blue and brown side of the lacing module. So that's how you arrange this. Uh, and you can see it goes in pretty smoothly that way. If you tried to put it in the wrong way, it, it's, a, you know, it's not going to fit right. So get this started. And go ahead and push it in until it latches into the slot where the boot latches. So now it's not going to fall out on you. The tool now is used to do the compression to do your termination. So this is, what, this is the primary function of this tool. Insert latch side up. Get that to seat flush to the bottom of the tool. And then you can use the tool handle to drive that home. And you probably heard that click. So now that, that latch moved from the larger opening to the smaller opening, you can see the latch popped up into the opening there. So now you, you know you've got it terminated. So if you did, have, uh, if you did want to use the optional boot, uh, you would have obviously installed that first. I'll cheat and I'll uh, put it on the back side. So it is optional. Um, some people don't use this if they're putting the plug into a smaller device, but just uh, flex your cable uh, a little bit just to get the latch, give, your, give the latch a little bit more room to work its way in there. And both sides of the latch should be snapped in now. And then you can use the, the color-coded clip uh, for latch protection. This also gives you some um, snag resistance, too, because this black latch will be on top of the, the thumb latch. So if you're pulling this through, uh, you know, a bundle of cables, you're not going to get that thumb latch to snag on anything. So that's your FUTP termination. Okay, so that was your Z-plug termination. Now, in cases where you have a miswire, um, one of the nice features of this plug is you can re-terminate it. So uh, what you need to do is remove the boot if you have the optional boot in place and then use the feature that I mentioned earlier on the bottom side of the tool handle. There's two little knobs there that will press into these holes to defeat the latch. 
so that you can pull this apart. So let me show you how that works. And make sure the thumb latch side and the side with the two holes is against the tool handle like this. So you're not using any other part of the tool, just the handle itself. Uh, and what you have to do is press that against there fairly tight and then squeeze that and wiggle this cable out. Don't try and just pull it out straight unless you're strong enough. It's hard to do that. So just give this a kind of a wiggle and work it out like this. And then you'll be able to open your door again with a screwdriver and that spot where the black arrow is, or you can use your fingernail, you just press in and pull out like this, and then you can reverse this out and pull that apart for your determinations. Okay, thanks for watching. If, again, if you have any questions, look us up on Seaman.com. There's an additional video at Seaman.com under the support tab for uh, more comprehensive terminations of the other cable types.